Welcome to Beyond My Crisis. I'm your co-host, Ron Rosnick. And I'm Vivian Gaspar. We are extremely fortunate to have with us here today celebrity author who has a best-selling book from around the world, and she's also an amazing mentor and coach, and she's helped hundreds, if not thousands, of clients unleash their passion and inner power. Elena Chapman is here with us today to really go to the heart and the meat of something that everyone really should think about beginning again. Welcome, Lena. Thank you so much for discussing this with us. Ah, thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. What does beginning again mean? Ah, <laughs> beginning again. Okay, when you lose a job, when you are getting divorced or are divorced, or when you reach retirement. Oh, that's the beginning again just because you were tired? And, 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 <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> so, so job, divorce, retirement anywhere that you are now at a crossroads of where one cycle of your life is stopping and a new one is starting some people turn 60 and think I've had people tell me this at 60 they think can I really do I have the gumption I did at 30 to really get going again hmm. that it's happens here right lot. and what do you and, and what do you tell them I tell them of course you can right. of course you can and what if you live to your 120 <laughs> and right. it's true, it happens more and more, that people are living past 100. And so what if you're one of the ones, and you're going to just putz around that all that time? No, you can do it again. Um, that's why, I, it's actually a friend of mine who is 62, this is an actual story, when she read this book, uh, and this is your book, book, The Prison yeah, Effect. Yeah, The Prison Effect, and she was a friend. She, she actually read it as a friend, just to wow. read it. And she called me up and out of the blue and she said, my gosh, this book, she said, I'm just going to take it slow. She says, I really can start again, can't I? I said, of course wow. you can. It resonated with her. It did. That's great. And it made me feel so good, <laughs> <laughs> you know, to see her really, really see that she has the strength and the confidence and the ability to move forward. So what, so what, what's the conversation we would say in our head to start over when we may have kind of like a defeatist approach? How do you get over that? Ah, I have a second chance to do what I want. What is it? I have a second chance to do what I want. What is it? What is it? And start that way. Okay. Okay, so how about... There's so many people, and I know we've touched on subjects like this before, but if someone's lucky enough uh, to get away from an abusive spouse and you're starting over after oh. that, can you let us know what's the best way to get yourself moving in a better direction so you never end up in another abusive situation? Because, you know, there's a lot of people who re repeat that cycle. Yes. They get away from one, they yes. find themselves back with another one. You different? need to get somebody who believes in you with you, on your side. What if you don't have someone like that? I don't then want to you, assume everyone does. You have to find someone. And it can be someone professional or it can be a friend. But I'm telling you why. It's because it's very easy when times get tough for you to think, man, at least I didn't have to do this when I was with him or her. Or I didn't have to do this. And, and you find yourself regressing. And you will have regressing days. It's important to have that other person to say, wait a minute, I believe in you. I know you can do this. I'll help you. Let's, let's sit down and write this out. Or let's, let's go get some ice cream and talk about this. So a, a friend or somebody who's going to be your accountability to m help you through those steps Someone to make your to life. to help you with accountability. Yeah, that's what you need. So you make a declaration of what you're going to do. They know about it and they check up they if you did it or didn't. You. And if you didn't do it, do but they, in a what nice do they do? Way. No, oh, no, 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 they're no, your right. friend. Oh, they're friends. Yeah. Either, uh, even a mentor wouldn't do this. <laughs> so they call it tough love, right? Yeah, tough love, yeah. And you do have that, but not quite that way. No, it, it's more of a being there when you're just not feeling at your best, when you're feeling weak, bolstering you up, bolstering you up and helping you realize that you really can do this. And it's very big for somebody who, because when you're in an abusive relationship, that person, I guarantee, is extremely charismatic. Oh, that's a good point. And wow. very they trapped you somehow. How did you start into that relationship? That's a very yeah, good point. Yeah, because they're very, very charming, and they come with the flowers, and they come with the beautiful excuses, and they come with the love, love, love. They're very charismatic. Oh. So you need that support more than anything. Okay, what about 
getting past and going and just beginning again after, if I dare say, someone who's been abused by someone they weren't in a relationship. If you were just raped by a stranger or oh. physically or yeah. basically any kind of any level of molestations, being yeah. Yeah. a victim that way. Yeah. But somebody you're not in a relationship with, yeah. how different is that? Because sometimes people feel... PTSD. There's a lot of situation. There's a yeah PTSD. There's there's anger, which anger, is, which is post traumatic stress yes, disorder. Yes, yes, right. and also uh, depression. You know, it can lead to a lot of things. And you really, really need to get with a professional. You really need to to help you process, because it, the 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 thing is, when something like that happens, you you're attacked. And, and it's, it's abrupt and it's harsh. So that means the feelings that you have, you may have never had before. And that movie is playing over and over. Oh, over yes. and over So you've got to break head. that you cycle, never. get that movie right. out, and get another movie right. in. You need professional movie. help. And about all the shame and guilt that's attached. Yep, uh, everything. You suffer from everything. Triggers, the shame and the guilt, the anger, you know, the sadness. Why am I on this earth? The depression starts in. It's just the fear, the downright fear of going anywhere by yourself anymore. You need professional, someone professional to help you process through all of that. Mm -hmm. And I, I would not say anything more about that. That really and, needs a professional. And I'm pretty sure that comes with the whole concept of lowering your self-esteem. You'll be like, what did I do to deserve this? Why oh. am I a target? Now, what's a professional that we should, someone should seek if they're in that kind of trauma? An LSCW, a psychiatrist, a mentor, um, a coach? The way I've, uh, no, so, no, no, I don't think a coach is, is, is qualified. I really don't. Mm -hmm. I would not take one on to do that. I've helped abused women. I've helped them to go out, but when it comes to an attack that is like a rape or things like that, you need a psychologist. Okay. You need someone who is going, who's been trained to deal with that kind of trauma. Right. And and I would not no that that's something that is got it very important to okay. do. And last but unfortunately not least, what happens? You just gave an example of somebody who's sixty about retirement. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I am actually going going back to retirement for just a second. Sure. That it happens much more to men than women because I think I've heard someplace that men far more associate who they are as a person with their livelihood, their occupation. So I've actually heard many times that when a man retires, he passes away relatively soon thereafter because he's losing his both identity. Men and women. Yeah. So it happens what women might think more I'm sorry? Well my dad's retired thirty years ago. He's still oh, well kicking. not every man. <laughs> I just yeah. heard that it was gonna happen. No, it depends on how they retire. And and uh, my dad too, I mean after he retired he went into beekeeping. He didn't beekeeping. Even, he I found a purpose. I think yeah. it's all about finding a he purpose. Found a my, purpose. My dad was a softball player, played twice a week until he See? was 89 years old. 89? Yeah. That's so great. I, I, that's what it is. Wow. Now they have a league for that age? <laughs> <laughs> no, he was the oldest one that's in the so world. Wow. That's very cool. See, it really matters about, and, and it's not only men anymore because women are having very strong careers. We're reaching a time when women have you know, lived careers and a lot of people tie their identity into their career. Okay, so when you do that, you, you, when all of a sudden it's gone, they think, what else is there? But that's why I say, you have to say, I have a second chance. What do I want to do with it? You use dreaming, perhaps, right? As Visualization. Visualizations. Yeah, go, take time and go sit under a tree. <laughs> maybe I'm an serious. apple fall on your head. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, maybe an apple. Wait, start to dream. dream. <laughs> Allow yourself. And the, there's a way to do that because some people have forgotten how to dream. Oh. And a guided so, meditation. Your oh. guided meditation or just go out and start allowing your mind to go as far-fetched as possible. I mean, you're on the moon. I just go that far fetched. Right. And then the next time you go out, it'll start raining itself in all by itself. You don't have to do it. And before you know it, you'll start coming up with ideas that are very viable. And start dreaming about that. And when one hits that's very viable, that you think, I really like that. So then you, be so you start believe doing in meditation it. then? Oh, gosh, yes. <laughs> right. Yes, meditation is fantastic. It's a great way to, to look within yourself. It's a great way to heal. It's a great way to gain perspective. Yeah, and, and I believe in visual, I, even journeying meditations are absolutely Transcendental. fabulous. Transcendental. 
Transcendental and wait, journey. Wait, wait. you got to explain. What is transcendental meditation? Well, Must transcendental, it's in the book, actually. Oh, okay. Well, I, have, a I, have a whole, I have a whole chapter on meditation, and I talk about meditation um, when it comes to moving, you know, because some people can't sit still, and I have some that's not. Transcendental is it gives you a profound peace and a centeredness and a look within. It is a, a very profound way, and it's, it's done with, with the starting of the breathing, okay? Now, there are others. Um, journeying is actually where you feel yourself going to another place, even. Wow. And that's another type of... And then there's even yoga, mm -hmm. yoga nidra, which is a type of meditation you do with yoga. So there are all... And I even have a friend who does the labyrinth. And oh, meditation the through that. Walking through Yeah, the... yeah, and she does a, a meditation through there. Mm. So there are all sorts of ways to meditate and to find out when, when you do the meditation and you really calm yourself and just dare to discover, you'll discover what you want to do. You'll discover a lot about yourself. And, and I'd love good. to hear from people out there who may try some of these techniques. I'd love to get an email and find out. Yeah, yeah, do. Do okay. email. Yeah, I would love that, too. I love to hear stories of anything. Well, I would so. like us to wrap up by one quick last thing that we unfortunately need to uh, address. Yeah. How about when you're starting over when your spouse has passed away? And let's say yeah. you've been married a long time, 20, 30, 40, 50 years yes. even. Like, Ron said his father played softball and was 89 he's, years old. He's still fine. He's, he's good. Still right. But my mom won't let him play softball anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but they've been married, what, over 60 years, uh, 70 years? So, I love that. But what happens if, they, if somebody's uh, in their 60s or 70s? They could have been married 30, 40, 50 yeah. years. And um, yes, yes, and they're not moving on. Yeah. So That's when it takes a friend or a daughter to, um, or a son to, to go in and help them and help them see what they can do. And it's not easy, because they're pres you're actually changing their perspective mm -hmm. to, to that, guess what, you are living on. Improving their perspective. Yeah, improving, of course. And, and that they can move on. And you know a good way, if you can get them to start going out with friends, more and more with friends, that really helps. I think the key is cherish every day of your life. It's, it is. Time is the most valuable Precious. commodity we have. Precious, it's a gift. And you know what? I think if yeah. it's your parent who passed away, so if you're one of your parents and you have your yeah, other left, your mother, your father, mm -hmm. whichever the case, guess what? It's okay to go spend a little more time with them, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Take them on a little vacation or even a trip to the zoo. Or to lunch. Spend more time. lunch. Anything. Or to Anything. London. <laughs> I'd like that. <laughs> thank you so much for helping us with Thank you very much, Elaine. Oh, we appreciate you're welcome. this. It addresses you are so, so many people. And you know what? This is really a great day, way for a lot of different play, people to get beyond their crisis with moving on. Ah, oh, there we go. Welcome to Beyond My Crisis. I'm your co host, Ron Rossnip. And I'm Vivian Gaspar. We are so fortunate to have with us here international best-selling author Elena Chapman. Welcome, Elena. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Elena, we are so fortunate that you have come back to educate our viewers on something that I believe everyone has had to deal with, the death of someone you love. And I think yes. the problem is a lot of people don't address it. They cry. They figured I'll just get over it and then they hope they do. Yeah. What is the right steps or even concept of grieving? Oh. Well, everyone has their own way to grieve. But, and I wouldn't say there are right steps or wrong steps to grieving, it's how you feel. But if you're finding that you are grieving long, long, long periods of time, or that you're having trouble. What is a long period of time? <laughs> where it's starting to inhibit your life profoundly for a period of time where you're starting to lose friends or not get out of the house. When you find yourself getting isolated. Now, a little bit of that will happen in grief, but when it's prolonged and you're starting to suffer from it, um, when friends are asking, where are you? Mm -hmm. 
that's not a good sign. <laughs> what is the normal period of time that that's okay to do? The, the actual in-house, any, oh gosh. You know, I've seen people do it for a week. I've seen people do it for a month. It depends. Okay. People grieve in different ways. Some people don't even cry at funerals. How about after? Is it okay to not cry? Yes. Why? It, there's when no is that okay? That's Everybody's why we always have to, be to follow sobbing. Us, you know? <laughs> No, no, no. Some people sob. They feel good to sob. They want to let it all out. Other people have to process it. You will cry at some point or you will uh, process it in another way. You, you, you will, unless you're shoving it down. So it must be That's processed. You're either yeah. shoving it down, you're not addressing the issue, you're not digesting it, right. or you're going to process it. Or you're going to process it. And process doesn't mean you cry. Process means you may cry. It'll be funny. It might pop out when you're doing something else. You might be watching a movie. You might be shopping. And all of a sudden, you'll start to cry. And that's okay. It might be on their birthday, whatever. But you don't have to think you are abnormal because you're not crying. Is there something we should say to someone that's mourning that you, we feel is mourning a little too long? Are there ideas to pep them up or an activity they can do? You know, the first thing to do is just be an ear. Be a consoling friend with an ear and listen to them. And then the next thing that would be very good is to get them into a support group. What's a support group? A, like, su like a what? support group. Actually, it doesn't even ha Well, yeah, a support group would like be nice. Like look up Somebody, on Meetup? Or? They're, they're, no, no, there are tons of support groups out there for people who have lost people in their lives. So what do they Google search? Mm, you Google, say, um, losing, okay, grieving, lose, lost mate, dot, you know, just, or, or for someone who is grieving and lost a mate, perfect. And then it'll okay. come up with all these different organizations. There's griefsomething.com. There's a bunch of them. There's a bunch. How is it different if you've lost a parent? Let's say you're an adult and you've lost your parent versus if you lost your spouse, uh, you know, whether it be suddenly or over a prolonged illness. Is, is it different grief for different people in respect of who they lost? Well, it depends on the relationship they had, too, you know, with these people. Um, there's a lot of factors that play into it. it say... You were very close to your father, but you weren't so close to your husband. Well, then you're going to grieve your father more than you will grieve the husband who died. You know, it, it, it makes total sense. This is not a mystery. So but, in our mind, we shouldn't say something's wrong about the way I feel. No. We shouldn't blame ourselves for the way I feel. We have to be okay with it. Right. Acceptance. You know, for instance, I'll use myself as an example. When my dad died and when my stepdad died, both awesome, wonderful men that I love, and I have to say, I didn't cry at either funeral, okay? But why didn't I cry? Because of my view of past life and passing over is a lot different than many other people. I don't feel we're at an end. I feel like that our spirit lives on. And I think it lives on everywhere. And, and I, I know that if I just allow myself to feel it, I can feel their energy. And that's not denial. That's just the way your belief system is, right. that's much more resilient than some other frameworks. Oh yeah, though. that they're going to go get judged. Yeah. Then you get scared. Are they in heaven or are they in hell? You know? <laughs> I don't think that way. The yeah. other thing, um, I, I also... In Judaism, there's no, no heaven or hell, but there is, well, a, according to my rabbi, he said there's purgatory. Ah. Oh, Catholic, we have, we have purgatory. But it's too. not bad. It's not like you're getting punished. No, it's just a no. correction, a yeah. place to correct. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a nice idea that if there's no hell, then you shouldn't be so afraid or afraid for the person who passed over? That's a nice idea. I think that it's all consciousness where you, you go really more than anything. And I've done research on it. I really have because I was curious. And, and when I'm curious, I do research. But I also feel that when, um, you know, both my, my father and my stepdad were very sick. And... For me to want them to suffer, to live longer in that condition, I just can't do it. I know that they're at peace now, you know? So you have to, when, when someone is grieving, um, sometimes, I don't want to say it gets selfish, but sometimes we don't see what the situation really was. That, that this poor person had been suffering with cancer for a long time or with Lou Gehrig's disease and, and actually had a terrible suffocating death. You know? So we should look... Why would we look into wanting them to so stay? We have to look at the glass half full then. We yes. have to look at the positive 
Yes. In every circumstance. Yes. But that doesn't mean that you're not going to miss them. Right. And, and it doesn't not. mean you're not going to miss um, the things that they used to do at the house. Habits. We mourn habits more than anything in the world. Oh, that's interesting. We mourn the habits. That. Yes, you'll be fine until you go to make the dinner for one. You'll be fine until it's time to go to bed and nobody's beside you. You know what I mean? Those, those are habits. We mourn those habits. We have to realize it's habits that we're mourning. We ha it's just keeping things in perspective. That's a great awareness. I never thought about the yeah, habits are what we're attached to. Yes, very much so. And so you have to take steps to change the habits. Okay, so I'm really curious about something. There's, I think, somewhat of a controversy, depending also upon religious beliefs, between cremation and burial with, you know, different vari varieties of headstones or the flat, you know, metal mm -hmm, plaques mm -hmm, and the, and the mm -hmm. cemeteries. Does that make a difference in your belief or your um, experiences if it's easier to grieve if you have a cemetery plot to, or a headstone to go visit versus if someone's cremated and they got scattered to the ocean yeah. or if they cremated and they're sitting in an urn in your living room? Yeah. What's the difference? Or, Do you think or so? they're now planted as a tree. That's an idea. That's like, another what one if they become started. part of a necklace? I heard that you can oh, make it into oh, no. a jewelry. Really? Yeah. So your belief Sit system is that, that physical matter just gets altered and goes somewhere else. Physical, well, yeah. Spiritual and energy. Spiritual in every energy and matter never, ever goes away. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what about for the person grieving? Do you think it helps someone to have a place like a cemetery to go, or even to have their... <laughs> for each person. <laughs> I'm in an urn. I, just, I saw I someone where an urn is actually inside a clock. Do you yeah. know that they actually make a decorative yeah. clock to put on a fireplace mantle, for example, or on a shelf, and you never knew that behind yeah. the face of a clock is the plastic box that holds I know. the remains. I know, it's like, I know. It's like saving time in a bottle in a clock. Ooh, yeah. That's, that's a that's good song. way to put it. But is it, which is better to console someone? Do they have? Everyone is their own person. And, yeah, and it doesn't they matter. And they, they may feel very comfortable having the remains on their mantle or in a clock or growing a tree or going to the cemetery. If there's somebody who's going to move, they might not want them in the cemetery. You know what I mean? It, it all depends on the person. As far as religious belief, I can't, I can't say what's right or wrong. That is your faith, and I respect that totally. However, but the goal is what I'm hearing is um, what, be okay with it, digest yeah, it, and okay. just accept this, and um, and Christmas, create a great life out yeah, of it. Yeah, and and make a great life out of it. Know that they wouldn't, don't want you just sitting them there bemoaning them. Right. If they I, want you and, to move and, on. And when I, if I die, I'm not going to say when. If, <laughs> if That's, I die, <laughs> That's good. We don't know. Yeah. Ron is actually a vampire. Did we not know this? <laughs> um, I would hope that my children and people that care about me would be inspired to live a better right. life from right. my, within my memory. I know. I tell my boys, I say, you know what? First of all, I don't want everybody just coming to awake and everybody serious. I want a party. Be happy for me. And then I said, and I would like to be cremated. I said, you take my ashes and all three of you have to go to Lake Champlain, if it's still not against the law, and spread my ashes. Wow. But go three together because you'll all be in different places, and if you unify, it would be a very meaningful thing oh, for me. Nice. That's a great idea. Well, I also want to go back for a second. For someone whose loved one just passed away, Yes. I heard about this stages of grief. Can mm -hmm. you cover any of that with us now? I don't necessarily go to the stages of grief, but I know that the stages of grief have helped many people. And, and it, is it real? I mean, does that really yes, yes. come about inside yeah. people? I've heard that one of them is anger, denial. Lots of people. My mother, she goes through that. She, she has had, um, uh, I thought it was kind of funny at first, but she went through uh, when she wasn't feeling well. And, and she just made this one comment in the car. She said, well, I don't know why they're not here to help me. Oh. And she met her two ex-husbands, her two dead Which husbands. one did you want first? <laughs> I didn't ask her that. But they could be there That's by what being I told an, an inspiration for her. Well, I said, Mom, they are here. 
I said, they are here. They're near you. For heaven's sakes, they're in, you know, just, just allow yourself to feel that energy. They're here. And she said, no, but they're not here taking care of me. Um. And I said... I said, well, you could do your best. If you open yourself, you will feel the comfort of them. And, and if you open yourself, you may even gain knowledge. But you have to have the clarity. And, and, but we like to blame. We like to, it, it's just her way of grieving and letting it out in an anger form. And you do, you do that. But for me to sit there and say, you shouldn't do that, is not going to help the situation. Right. I can help her process it and, and think of it. I can plant the seeds that there is an alternative. But yes. she still Inspire has to... Inspire her to think of it in a different way, in a positive way. And then she has a choice. And that's what you can offer people. A choice. A choice always. So if you are going through a grieving process, or if you love someone who is, do you believe the support groups or getting a coach or a mentor such as yourself is really a good help? Or does it just go away by itself and eventually you come to terms with it and you just move on? What's really necessary? I think, you know... No, I, I find that the people who just want to move on don't do it so well. Really? I do. I, I do think, I think they that... They just get accustomed to that person being absent from their lives Some and just people do, some people do, and a lot of people don't. They still... Oh, I don't want to say they have resentment, but they, they just are having more problems with it than most. But they shove it down, and it comes out like with my mother. Why aren't they here? So if they can't, kind of if they can't speak about it, have a conversation seriously about their pet, right. their loved one, then there's some obstacle that they may need to get through. Yeah. Work out, which in case a mentor, you were saying, is someone that can help you discover these things about uh, yourself. Yes. To improve. And, and mentors is the one good thing. If you're one who doesn't like groups, like right. my mother, <laughs> you don't like to go to the groups, a mentor is a wonderful way because a lot of mentors, including myself, have ways for you to process it that you don't have to go out in the group, but you're talking and you're communicating and you're writing. Right. So your insight as a mentor is at a much higher level than someone that doesn't have the experience to get through this right. and understand exactly. the human experience exactly. as well. Exactly. Because so you're after, the guide. Yeah, yeah. You're the I, spirit guide, actually. Oh, you're the spirit guide. I love that. <laughs> it, yes, and we also help you uh, find the direction to move on. We don't just leave you at that point. That's right. the one thing. And you, you have so much do. more to offer. I mean, yeah. just in, yeah. in this one area, but you're probably thinking, how can I make this person's life exactly. fantastic That's at the I'm same thinking. time? Moving on and into any mentor life. that I would want. I would want not just to have expertise to get out of my grieving, but to kind of springboard me Spring. into happiness and, and success. And show me, show me this, uh, that, that future that I could have and actually believe in me. Yeah. Thank you. Well, yeah. on that note, yeah. I really appreciate that you came to help us because oh, who hasn't known someone or they themselves lost someone that's very dear to them, that they love with everything mm -hmm. in their being? And then... If it hasn't happened yet, they might need to reach out to someone to help them or reach out to some mentor uh, or someone to help them through the process or someone they love. So let this be a way for you or someone you love to get beyond this crisis. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>